Okay, so using our customized dice example, uh, let's go through some questions that we could possibly ask uh, with you with regard to our PMF and our CDF. So what if I just simply ask, you know, what is the probability that X uh, is going to equal zero? All right, so just reading this chart, we would very simply go over to, okay, where is X equaling zero? There it is. What's its associated probability? It would be one half. Okay, so that one should be super straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, let's keep on going down to some more complicated ones. Okay, so what's the probability of rolling uh, at most a one? Okay, so now we've got kind of this word problem. We're like, okay, what's the probability of rolling at most a one? Okay, so translating this, we'd say the probability of our discrete random variable, our roll, of rolling at most a one. Okay, so could we roll a zero and that, that would fall within this, at most a one. We could have a one, but a two and a three would be excluded because that would be more than one. So we'd want to say that the probability of x is actually less than or equal to one. Okay, and well, hey, check that out. We have this in our a CDF. We can just go and pluck it out. That would equal to two thirds. So one of the hard things about about this part that we're coming into right now is being able to convert a word problem into our math. Like as soon as we got it into our math, it was super easy to do. Right, give me a second. Let me erase these out, and we'll, let's do a couple more. Okay. Okay, so consider the next probabilities. Okay, so what is the probability that x is going to be greater than uh, or equal to 2? All right, so this one is different because this is not a PMF and nor is it our CDF. Remember, a CDF adds things going up. We add from the spot and everything less than it, so we're going in this direction. That's our CDF. But here it's saying, okay, what is the probability of being an X, a number two or greater? All right, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could literally just go over to the PMF and calculate, okay, it could be equal to two or it could be greater than two, so it's going to be one third. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Or we can translate this into terms of our CDF. All right, so saying that it's, and when we do things like that, remember that's called a complement. We've used that idea um, in section three. So a, a complement of this uh, would be equal to, so if we're looking at the complement, one minus, I and mean, we now we just need to figure out, okay, what's the complement of this guy? So the complement of this is going to be the probability of x. Okay, the complement is going to be looking at it in the opposite direction. So we're going to say less than or equal to a specific value. Now we just have to know, okay, so if we're going to go less than or equal to in the complement, can we include two? And we say, no, we can't include two because two is included in this probability. So it can't be included in our complement. It can't be in both uh, your, it can't be included in the complement and the non-complement. It can only be in one. Okay, so in order to do that, we'd say one minus the probability of x being less than or equal to one. So, which is really cool, we can do that. This is equal to one. This comes straight from our CDF. We see less than or equal to one, once again is two thirds, or four six, whatever one you wanna do. I'll do two thirds, which is equal to one third, which is the same as just summing these two values in our PDF. So anyways, that's another way that we can look at this. Let's do one more example uh, before we move on. Okay, so let's do that the probability of x is equal to 2 or, I'll do union, 
the discrete random variable is equal to three. Uh, let's not do three. That's boring. Let's do zero. Two or zero. Okay, so we just break this down to like how we've done before. So this is equal to the probability of x equaling two plus the probability of our discrete random variable equaling zero minus our intersection probability of x equals two intersect probability of x equaling zero. All right, so we've done this problem, this setup before. We just need to look at it. Okay, so the probability of x equaling two is equal to one sixth. Pull that from our PMF. Probability of x equaling, oh sorry, x equaling two is one sixth. Excuse me, I got ahead of myself. One sixth plus probability of it being zero is one half, or I'll put three sixths minus, okay, so now we've got this intersection. Okay, so remember this intersection is only important if they are not mutually exclusive. Well, the nice thing is, is when we roll a dice, we can't roll a zero and a two at the same time. So this and term just goes to zero, the probability that the intersect is zero, and so our final probability is two thirds when we simplify, or the probability of rolling a two or rolling a zero is two thirds. So anyways, I hope that that helps you um, being able to manipulate and play around with our support, our PMF, and our CDF.